Sabbath to all. Is it still Sabbath technically? Sabbath peace? Yeah. Sabbath Happy peace. Happy Passover. It's uh, another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are watching in, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's, uh, well, before we get started, anybody, we, this is not actual Sabbath study, right? So it's like an impromptu Passover type study. So anything anybody want to talk about or any questions anybody have? I know mom got some questions, but I don't know if you want to ask them in front um, on the camera. Yes, no, maybe? Hmm? <laughs> wow. <laughs> anybody else have questions? Kids, y'all got questions? Anything y'all want to talk about? As it relates to God, I don't want to talk about no darn Drake. You know, no, uh, you know, Kylie Jenner. You know, I know what y'all are into. Any questions about God? Bible? No? Anybody else? Nothing y'all want to talk about? Y'all going to let me run the show? All right, then. Let's open up to uh, John chapter, what, 19? Give, give me John chapter 19. Let's open up the book. Last week in our normal Sabbath study, we was, uh, we was talking about cleanliness. All right, we talked about the law. We talked about how the law teaches us how to what to eat, teaches us how to clean ourselves, teaches us how how a mother should uh, separate herself after having a baby. And we talked about how for some people it's like, oh, that's just rituals and religious and all that stuff. And then when you look at it, you think about it, and you just apply it in, ter apply it in terms of uh, practicality. <coughs> you'll see, you look back at these people' history. They didn't even wash their hands taking, taking babies out of, the, uh, out of the womb, right? And babies would die, right? So you see that if you look at it from a practical standpoint, we were ahead of the game because of the most high God, right? So a lot of these things, these people, now you see them all over the hospital. They got sanitizer everywhere because they learned. They didn't listen to They didn't listen to our history, though. They learned just from experience, which is cool, right? When you have to, when you have to learn something yourself, but it's already been somebody out there that's tried that method, that's not wisdom. That's foolish. Right? When you have exposure to somebody else doing something and you see it don't work and you didn't take that, that information in and adjust how you do things, that's foolishness. Wisdom says, my friend went through that. I saw how that went. I'm going to adjust how I do things. Right? These people went through that. The history says that. That's why the book, before we get John chapter 19, grab, uh, give me Romans chapter 15 verse 4. It's Romans chapter 15 verse 4. This is what the whole book set up for. Everything that we look at, the reason why we come together today, right? Whole book is because it's set up for us to remember something, to see. This is how other people did it now. Y'all can adjust how y'all do it to emulate what was right and shy away from everything that was wrong. This, this is uh, uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 14, or 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our When it say aforetime, what does that mean? Before. Right? When it says everything that was written before, that's when it said whatsoever that was written aforetime, it's saying everything that was written before, what happened? Were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. It was written for us to learn from. When we, when we, we've been reading about the Israelites inside of, when we were in, in uh, captivity in Egypt, we came out, went into the wilderness. We've been reading about that. Right? And we've been reading how our people are reacting to, to adverse situations, stuff that's a little hardships. Right? You want months and months and months without eating certain food. Right? You got to eat bread for like a whole year. Called manna. We've been eating it for a whole year. Anybody would stand back and be like, you know what, honestly, I just want a little bit of meat. You don't think we would? We, if most of our God took us out of here today and put us in, you know what I'm saying, a desert in Saudi Arabia or something. And we ate every single day we had to eat 
What's some good bread? Uh, Hawaiian tweet oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Hawaii. Every single day. Now, that's, that's good. So that's some good bread. Every day for a year, you eating Hawaiian sweet bread, you ain't going to turn around and be like, let me tell you something. I mean, at least in America. Right? I mean, at least in America, every now and again, I can go get me a cheeseburger. Tell me we wouldn't say it. Every time talk about fat burger. Like, man, that fat burger was. You know what I'd be? I'd be like, God, listen. You can put a fat burger right there. There's a lot of space. I'll run it. No profit. You know what I'm saying? That's what we'd be looking for. We'd be looking, let's get something to eat. Let's get something else. So it's important for us when we look at this and we get it for our learning that we learn from it. Not that, yeah, a lot of times when we, as Christians, a lot of us are Christians, right? As Christians, what we've been taught to look at is those Israelites. They just, ah, oh, God was right there in front of them and they just didn't listen. Can you learn from that? Can you learn from, what is that? The Christian, you know, Christian, good for it. Don't judge people. Ain't that judgmental? That's not how we want to do it. We want to look at it and we want to say, why did they make that decision? What conditions brought them to be so foolish, even though the most high God is right there in front of them? What, what made them go to that level? Let's study it. Let's look at it. What happened? Let's put it in perspective. It ain't just one day they just say, oh, I want some food. I want some meat too, God. No. They went a whole year without eating anything else. They were like, well, honestly, compared to this, I'm kind of cool in Egypt. We thought it was bad, but compared to this, Egypt was all right. Right? So what we can learn from that is we can say, you know what? We can't keep our eyes on the moment. We have to keep our eyes on God's promise. What did God say was going to come along? Okay, that's what we need to be focusing on. Right? Because the same thing happens here. Same thing happened here. We, we, got, we got issues. We got things that come up. We got hardships. And it make us just want to stop. It make us want to quit. All of us, me including. It make us just want to be like, man, I don't want to do this stuff no more. I'm sitting here praying to the most high God this stuff don't work out. You know what I'm saying? Be sitting there be like, man, this stuff, this stuff ain't, you know what I'm saying? Shit. It just make you want to quit. But then you have to stop and you have to say, you know what? My fathers did that. And they but still in the, in the wilderness right now. They body still dug somewhere down in the wilderness right now. Because all of them died in the wilderness. My fathers did that. Right? My fathers quit. They said, you know what? Let me compromise. Right? Our King Jeroboam, right, came on the scene. First thing he did, compromise. He said, you know what, let me make a holiday. Because, I mean, I know if I lead the holidays the way they are, the way the Most High God wrote them, everybody going to go to Judah. But I'm the king of Israel, not Judah. I don't want everybody to go to Judah. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make my own holiday. And that way they'll come to Israel. Everybody who lives in Israel, they stay in Israel to celebrate the holidays. I'll make them. Just like Judas' holidays. Just like God's holidays. You don't think that's what these people are doing? Why Easter always fall right by Passover? You don't think that's what these people are doing? Tell me, tell me why Christmas they give gifts. What are we doing, pure? You tell me which one came first. You don't think these people would copy our stuff? And try to do something and make it look like ours? Why? Because they know we are served. We are messing with. You know what? We'll mess around and serve the most high God. Now nah, we can't have that. Let, let's give him something close to it. Hey, Chris, that's his birthday. I'll top that line. It ain't his birthday. That stuff almost this stuff would drive people to not believe. Right? That was me. I stopped believing because of that. I watched the document. Hey, lit my butt out head like December 25th. That's this person's birthday. And that's a holy day for this ancient religion. And this, that, and they lit my butt off like, dang, the Bible was a lot. The whole time I'm like, Wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? It didn't take me years. I was like, wait a minute. December 25th ain't in the Bible. They can attack the stuff that's not in the book. You touch this book. Touch this book. You can't say nothing against it. You can run your darn mouth. Somebody who know how to handle it. Shut your butt down. That's what it's about. Us learning it and learning how to, how to defend ourselves. We ain't, ain't got to defend God. He'll take care of himself. We got to defend our own faith. Right? When the book says defend the faith, it's defending our own faith. We have to be able to give a reason for what we believe. Otherwise, we'd be messing around and be like, you know what? I don't know why I believe what I believe. And it's a lot of people that have no idea why they believe what they believe. That's why every single week we come here and I try to break it down. We try to make sure that we look at it, get the detail. Because I want y'all to know why you believe what you believe. Most High God wants you to know too. Uh, forget John 19. Let's go right to Passover. Grab, uh, grab, uh, grab, what I want. Leviticus uh, 
Uh, we want that too. But before that, give me Exodus maybe 12 yeah. or 13. 12. Not 13? 12 is when it started. All right. Exodus 12. <laughs> Who said that? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's book. Book say, book say, if you keep that in memory, you'll be saved. Not necessarily that specifically, but the book say, you keep, you keep the gospel in memory, you'll be saved. You learn about the Passover, and you learn that what we're going to go over right now, we're going to learn how the Passover represent the gospel. Right? At that point, everything, once you get to that point, when you look into the book, and you understand the law, you understand the prophets, you understand the Psalms, and you learn how to relate all of that to Yahushua. Right? You learn how to look at all of it and see how Yahushua is in every single word. And you learn to see him. Sometimes it's difficult. Right, we can go to a random page right now. And we'll look at it, and it'll be here, hit or miss. Maybe I'll be able to see Yahushua in it, maybe not. But I can guarantee you, it's another man of God somewhere in America, somewhere in Saudi Arabia, somewhere, somewhere, who know how to look at that same verse and they'll be like, oh no, this is Yahushua in it. Right? Yahushua is in every word. Maybe I can't point them all out. Right? I can point out some of them things. Maybe I can't point all of them. But he's in every single word in this book. Right? Everything relates back to him. When you're able to look at it and see that, that's keeping the gospel in memory. Right? You can't lose. No matter what you look at in this book, it reminds you of the gospel, which brings it to memory. That's our salvation. Well, am I lying about that? What book? What am I looking? What am I quoting right now? What am I paraphrasing? What you think? Keep it in memory. Uh, that Romans. Uh, I want to say Romans uh, five. I don't remember. It ain't Romans, so it's probably First it Corinthians. An epistle letter for sure. <laughs> first Corinthians, what five? Somebody help me out. First Corinthians. I don't remember. All right, grab for me right now, Exodus chapter 12. Give me verse 20. Is that what I want? 30 something, huh? The beginning of it, talk about the Passover. You trying to get like. I want to talk about when. He's in 20 is when he said, You shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitations. Where'd that start? 20, 18? 20. 20 is where it starts? It should be first, something before in that. The first month on the 14th day of the month at even, you shall eat unleavened bread. That's 20? That's 18. All right, that's, that's, give me 18. So this is Exodus chapter 12, verse 18. Listen to the book. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even ye shall eat unleavened bread. All right? This is our first month. These people's first month was January. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? It's all right we recognize they So we living in their systems. It's all right. It'd be fool. It's, you know, you'll get some Hebrew be like, no, reject all that. No, that'd be fool. It'd be fool. You living in a system. You need, to, you need to operate in a system. Ain't no sin to, to recognize January, right? You know what I'm saying? Ain't no sin in that. I right, recognize their system. That's fine. But don't forget yours. Right? You know what I'm saying? Recognize theirs, but just keep some acknowledgement of yours. You know what I'm saying? Why you doing it? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's okay to learn two languages. You know what I'm saying? Three, four languages. You, you grow up in Africa. You know what I'm saying? People grow up. We met a lady. What was her name? Remember that lady name helped us out with our house? Oh, my God. What was that lady name? <gasps> she was, uh, she is from North Africa. You know what I'm saying? She had telling us. She just, you know, helping us out with our house. She had an accent, a strong accent. You know what I'm saying? She is an Arab. You know what I'm saying? I had a strong accent. And she kept on, she was like, yeah, I'm, I was born in North Africa. I was like, oh, okay. So we started asking questions and everything. She was like, yeah. I mean, I grew up learning, what, she had like six, seven languages? Yeah. yeah she was like, I grew up. It was mandatory. You know what I'm saying? Because Africa had been co colonialized in that area. So you got people speak German, French, Portuguese. You know what I'm saying? All the Spanish, all these different languages right there around each other. You have to know it all. You know what I'm saying? And you have to learn some of the native tongues. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, you ain't going to be able to survive. So she said, you know what I'm saying? They learn them. It like, ain't nothing wrong with learning multiple languages. That makes you more efficient, right? If I can come in a room and I can speak slang, right, and, and relate to my, my cousins and my, my, my nephews and relate to, relate, to, relate to people on the streets and all that, and then go right into my job and then speak proper English, right, that makes me more effective. Don't let, these, don't let any Hebrew Israelite, don't let any Christian make you feel like you're wrong for being more effective. Right? Being able to communicate. The most high God called it, that's what we got to do. We got to communicate. What you can't do is you can't forget what the most high God gave you. And you can't let what the rest of the world give you go over what the most high God gave you. Our month started with Abib. Right? And on the 14th day, the most high God said, this is what you do. See what the book say. 
In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread. Uh huh. Until the one and twentieth day of the month, at even. Uh huh. That's seven days. We gotta eat unleavened bread. What else? Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eats that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. That's why you know what I'm saying you get up. You know what I'm saying? Get up early in the morning. Guess what you do? Go through all your cabinets. You get rid of that darn leaven. My what's my favorite cake? I told my mom, I was like, Mama, Passover coming up. Go ahead and make a German chocolate cake. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I, I ease that thing. I ain't had a conversation really with I ease that thing in there. You know what I'm saying? You know how you'd be like asking for something without asking for something. Be like, you know, maybe dessert, Mom. You know what I'm saying? What, what kind of dessert? You know, uh, whatever you whatever you want to make, Mom. You know what I'm saying? She's like, mm, German chocolate cake. She know what I want. German chocolate cake. I'm like, oh, well, you know, if you make that. You know what I'm saying? You can go ahead and make that. I mean, if you make that, that'd be nice there. You know what I'm saying? Then, I wake up with that last night. Yeah, it's already done. Last night, I was like, mm, it's Passover. I can't have that. You know how much that would have hurt me? She would walk in there with that German chocolate cake, and I would have been like, nah, go ahead and throw it away. Yeah. All right, go ahead and put that thing in. That thing would have hurt her. You'd be like, I spent all night making this thing. Yeah, I would have just walked back out. <laughs> <laughs> Take the thing and eat it in the car. You know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> but that's what we that's what we look at. We got to get rid of the leaven. That's why I woke up early this morning. I started looking for it. I was like, right, let's get her the bread. Just waste some money on bread. That's it. I should have prepared. Right? I should have prepared. I had some hamburger buns, bro. Now, Peter, that thing flat. I, I had some hamburger buns. That thing might need to go. some fresh ground beef on the Had some good hamburger bun thing out of there. You know what I'm saying? All right, he said, get the leaven out of your house. What up? Ye shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitations, shall ye eat unleavened bread. Uh huh. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. And you gonna, you going to take a bunch of what? Hyssop. You're going to mess around and take a bunch of hyssop. And you're going to dip it in what? And dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. Just last week. Who remembers what we were talking about? Being clean. Didn't we talk about hissa? Who remember what we were talking about when it came to hissa? You need that for the purification, for the sin offering. What offering was it? Sin offering. Wasn't it the red heifer? Yeah. Right? Just like we, we looked at it, we had the red heifer. You had to take a red cow, right? And a red cow would be brown, right? So a brown, you take that, that you know what I'm saying? Y'all seen, seen that them bright red brown cows, you know what I'm saying? The strong brown. You know what I'm saying? You take that brown cow and you sacrifice it. Yeah. No yoke, right? Yeah. No yoke can come across no, over yeah. their neck. It hasn't been worked. That mean that that mean you can't work that cow. You you can't strap that cow to no machine. It hasn't you know what I'm saying? You got you got that thing got to be fresh. You know what I'm saying? Nobody can touch it. Right now they have uh, is it Kobe B? No. Did somebody tell us that Kobe B? The beef that you that you uh the cow the cow that you you know what I'm saying you hang it. You know what I'm saying? From like you suspend it all this life, it never really touched the ground, it never, you know what I'm saying, really do nothing, it just suspend. And then out of that, they make beef, you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be like one of the best expensive beefs. Ain't it Kobe beef? I think it's Kobe beef. That's the process that they make it, you know what I'm saying? They they take a cow from birth, you know what I'm saying? Hang that thing up. Just a miserable darn cow. You know what I'm saying? The whole life, just darn sitting there, just hanging, just like this. Legs just swing. You know what I'm saying? And they take it because now the muscles aren't used. You just chop that thing up, you know what I'm saying? Make some beef out of it, flip that thing on the grill. That thing will come out nice because no muscles have been used. It's just, just flat, you know what I'm saying? But it's a, it's, a, it's a nice tenderized meat. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same way for our sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Nobody can work this cow. We ain't suspended because we ain't cruel like they people are cruel. You know what I'm saying? But we, you know what I'm saying? We didn't do that. Yeah, but you know, you had a cow let it do its thing. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Yeah, then we slaughter that thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's appropriate. Yeah, I think. I think. I think that ain't necessary. You know what I'm saying? You spotted that thing right in front of the freak. You know what I'm saying? Let the freak get to it. You want to eat, you kill it. But you take that cow, right? You take that You take that red heifer, and one of the laws that we had, one of the instructions that we had was to put hyssop with the blood. And the same thing, we looked at that, and we said, oh, that relates back to Yahushua. How do we connect that to Yahushua, T? You put hyssop. We gave him hyssop and vinegar. When Yahushua was hanging on that cross, guess what they gave him? Hyssop. I thought it was vinegar. They gave him that, too. They gave him hyssop. Right? Drank it through the hyssop. It is. They dipped the hyssop and then gave it and he sucked it off the hyssop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, yeah, I got some hyssop in there right there. It's a plant. Right? And it's something that we mix with our, but it's also a cleaning agent. 
It's, it's something that we mix with our uh, with our sacrifices. And here again, we have a sacrifice with Hissa, right? All that connects back to Yahushua. Everything that we read, it connects back to Yahushua. Gotcha. We'll talk about it. Keep going. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. Right? So then you take that and you go outside your house. And he said you strike your 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 your, your uh, door with it. You know what I'm saying? Outside of your door with it. Right? And just strike it. Right? What does this represent? Where's the heart? Outside. You know what it represents? What it represents? The putting the blood outside your door. Uh-huh. Okay. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Don't be trying to give her the Apollo music. No. No. What does it mean? What does it mean? What does striking the doorpost? Okay. It's represents the. Oh, you talked to her. Plagues? Yeah. You got it. What was the What was the plague? God came to rescue us out. He hit Egypt one after one, just a plague after plague. Started off with the water turning into blood, and it ended with all the firstborn males being taken out of Egypt. So you just imagine Egyptians living with you. They held you in captivity, and all of a sudden, all of their oldest children, right, oldest males, right, drop dead in a moment, right? And they know that this is happening because of a man named Moses is telling them that somebody named Yahuwah is is uh is uh judging them right now this whole time the pharaoh not really believing it you see crazy stuff happening but it's like eh, maybe coincidence and then that happens what do you think the instinct gonna be get out y'all can get up out of here let these people go y'all just killed my baby that's my oldest boy let these y'all go ahead and let these people go. get these people up out of here so that's how god got us out but he told us i'm not taking y'all firstborn Right? Y'all Israel. He said, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put a difference between Egypt and Israel. He said, I'm not gonna take, I'm not gonna take your 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 boys. But this is what y'all gotta do. You gotta kill that lamb. And then you gotta put it on your doorpost. And if you put it on your doorpost, then we'll pass over that. Right? The angel was the angel of death. Right? The angel of death, he'll pass right on over that. Everybody else's house, you getting it. If you ain't got that cover in there, your butt get it. Alright? Keep going. Let's see. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will pass you can't, through. You can't go out until when? The morning. What does that represent for us? He said, go in the house and none of y'all should go out until the morning. What does that represent for us? <sighs> three days, three nights in the ground. That was a good one. All right? Y'all should have stayed three days, three nights in the ground. And he, when he got up, it was what morning? First day of the morning. First day, First of, the day of the week. All right? Early Sunday morning, you know, I didn't Christian. I wasn't Christian. That's why they claim that they go to church on Sunday. Jesus woke up early Sunday morning. Look at it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how that thing go. They like that thing. They ain't gonna tell you what day that was. What day? What day y'all sure woke up? Was it just a Sunday? Was it any old Sunday? Any given Sunday? When that eleven bread? Huh? When that eleven bread or Passover? That was during the week of unleavened bread. That's called the first fruit sheep waving. That's right. You know what's significant about that day? If we read Leviticus chapter 23, it would tell us that the day following the Sabbath in the week of unleavened bread, which is exactly the day that he, he rolls, right? Because it's Passover, then that starts the week of unleavened bread, and then there's always going to be a Sabbath that falls within that week. And then for that Sabbath, the next day is always going to be Sunday because uh, Sunday follows the Sabbath, Right? And the book here tells us the day after that Sabbath, that's within a week of unleavened bread, we take a, our first fruit, right? So think of it from a farmer's point of view, right? I'm looking at it. Right now, we get hungry, we go into Smith's, right? But think about it as our ancestors looked at it. When they get hungry, 
they can't go to Smith's. When they get hungry, they got to go to their field or go to their storehouses, right? So them being able to produce their own food was very important. So what they would do, because sometimes you plant something and it just don't go. Anybody ever tried to plant something? Sometimes that thing don't go as planned, right? You plant something, it's like, eh, well, nothing came out yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm watering that thing. I don't know what I did. You know what I'm saying? I was looking on that, you know, the videos that pop up on, on Facebook. They make everything look easy. You just poke your finger inside the soil, drop a seed in there, and then two minutes later, you see that, that darn plant broke out. That thing didn't work like that for me. I poked my finger in there and put the seed in there, and the seed was still just like it was the next day. So I don't know how it worked, right? But for us, we look at it, and we look at our, 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 our ancestors, and they look at it, and they say, I know that sometimes this don't go as planned. So the first little sign of a crop that's produced, I want to take that to God. So the most high God say, take the first little fruit, first thing that sprout up. Your whole field haven't shown up. You don't have all your wheat. You don't have all your, you know what I'm saying, whatever you grow. You don't have all your stuff. All you got is that little first one that just sprout up. He said, take that out of the ground and bring it to him as an offering. That's a sacrifice. Because it's like, I don't even know if the rest of these are going to come up. So now I just got just a couple that just popped up and I got to take that and give it to God? He said, bring it to me as a sacrifice. And then the way he told us that is he said, this represents what we're asking for God to get more of. So from a practical sense, we're taking our, our, our potential food, offering it to God, hoping that he will bring us, praying that he will bring us the same thing in, in, in a larger boat. In abundance. Right? So now imagine, that was that, that was that day for us, practically. Right? Practically, that's how we live. We said, I'm going to take this crop, and God, give me more of these. Give me more wheat. Give me more barley. Right? So I can eat throughout the year. Give me more of this. Right? Practically, that's how it works. Now imagine, Yahushua died on Passover. He rose on that same day. Right? What does Yahushua represent to us? He represents the first fruit and the lamb. Right? But he represents the first fruit. So now we're now holding up Yahushua to God. And we're saying, make us like him. Bring us more of this. Right? And he will. They take, and he will, right? That All that's been taken with Easter. They give us Easter Sunday. Sometimes they try to get real fancy. You know what they call it? No, this is Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> you know, they think they did something with that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't celebrate no Easter. This is Resurrection Sunday with Easter eggs in my backyard. <laughs> right? Just make a fool of your darn self. Okay, you call it whatever you want. You still, whatever you call it, you still robbed us of the history and the, and, the, and the richness of what God gave us, right? This stuff, the, the, the book is written in mystery. You can never read anything in the book that's going to explain all that. It's designed for us to be able to look into it and grab this stuff out. It has to be given to us by God, right? And it ain't that God come down and give you a prophecy or risk me. I've never had a prophecy, Right? I've never felt that God audibly spoke to me. He only spoke to me through, the, through his word. Right? God never, you know what I'm saying, gave me a vision and said, hey, son, I want you to do this, that, and that. That's never happened. I appreciate the most high God if he make it happen. But if he don't make it happen, you think that's going to stop me from doing anything that books say? That's crazy. That's crazy. Right? When we look into the book, the most high God is asking us to study his word that, that way he can pull something out of us. When, when, uh, when Yahushua asked Peter, y'all remember when Yahushua asked Peter? He asked Peter, he said, who do men say I am? What did Peter answer? Who remember what he answered? Some of them said, see, he said, some people say he did. He said, some people say Elijah. Some other people say John the Baptist. Then he asked him again, he said, I know, but who do you say I am? And what did Peter say? He said, you the son of the living God. He said, you the son of the living God. You know what y'all should have said back to him? He said, my father in heaven. He said, flesh and blood didn't, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. He told, him, he told him, nobody taught you that. He said, not no human, a human being didn't teach you that. He said, my father in heaven revealed that to you. So do you think Peter in his mind at that time was like, yeah, I remember yesterday, you know what I'm saying, the father came down, he told me you was the son. No, that never happened. All he knew is he looked at everything from him, it was logical. He just looked at everything. Obviously, you're the son of God. But y'all sure were trying to let him know. It, no, you might look at it like you just came up with a logical decision. But that's not how this stuff works. The only way you would have come to that conclusion is the most high God drew you. 
He pulled you into that direction. Right? That's what this book teaches us. It teaches us how to see what's going on on the inside. On the outside, we can look at it and be like, yeah, just a normal day. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Black boy just got shot in the back. You know what I'm saying? Running from the police. No big deal. Right? On the inside, we can look at it and be like, uh, well, two things going on. God is judging us. Right? Because we in the land of our captivity and we, through our ancestors, have sinned many, many years ago. And the other way, the Most High God is setting these people up to wreak havoc on themselves so that they can be judged later. Right? Two things going on. We got to be able to see that internally because that's what's going on behind the scenes. On the surface, yeah, black man ran, he got shot in the back, racist cop. Right? That's white too. Right? Potentially. I don't know if they racist. They definitely scary though and they definitely prejudiced. Right? But from our point of view, we have to be able to look behind that stuff too. And we have to operate it. All these things are true at the same time. But we got to be able to navigate through that mentally, spiritually. Right? And be able to operate and be able to act with wisdom. Be able to navigate through all of the landfills, all of the minds that's coming, and be able to separate ourselves from the rest of the people. That's what holy means. It means to be set apart. Right? Keep going. What we got? I appreciate the Passover. That's, a, that's the first fruit sheep waving when he woke up. He people talking about Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. How do you take that from us? How do you take that from us? Like, how do you take how do you take what it, all this stuff came from? You change your name, put your own name on it, and just take it like it's been yours the whole time. If we did that to any, you know what these people say? If I wear an Indian costume or Native American, if I wear a Native American costume costume on Halloween, right? God forbid. But on Halloween, you know what they're gonna accuse me of? Cultural appropriation. Bruno Mars. Y'all, y'all been hearing about Bruno Mars? Bruno Mars, they on his butt. They like, he ain't never wrote a, an original song in his life. All his songs is based off of old black people music. You know what they, they accuse him of? He ain't black. That's cultural appropriation. Right? Oh, that's my kid. Right? So he said, they, what they accuse us of is taking somebody else's culture and then benefiting from it. What do you think these people doing? Get up. Why ain't all this, why we ain't screaming foul on every Christian? This is cultural appropriation. You taking our stuff, changing and benefiting from it. That wouldn't be right in any other sector. That's just because we don't know who we are. The people don't know who we are. Teach the people who they are. We teach people who we are. We change this thing real quick. We'll turn this thing around real quick. No, it won't be hard. We'll turn this thing around real quick. A lot of us don't want to know who we are. We know that thing comes with some responsibility. Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, think about it. You got to reckon with that thing after a while. You got to be, you got to think about that thing. You be like, that thing feel good right away. You learn about it. Israelites, we Israelites. Somebody show you all the evidence. What? The slave name was what? Jeremiah and and and, uh, uh, and, the, and the slaves got together and they sung what? Kumbaya. And God's name is what? Yah. Oh, and all that stuff start connecting. You be like, all this time we've been lied to. Right? You get that rage start getting in. These people, we they made us feel like we was nothing when we the people that God chose. That's when that thing starts feeling real good for you. Then you stop. And you be like, oh. But that means God real. <laughs> that means he told the future thousands of years ago. That means God real. And all those Ten Commandments. You know what I'm saying? People always don't. That's all they know about the Ten Commandments. All those Ten Commandments that I ain't been following. Because they ain't real too. That means I might need to do them. Yeah, being a Hebrew is cool and all. But I think I'm from, I'm, I'm from Egypt. And that's how that thing goes. Right? Then they start rejecting. No, I'm a Moor. I'm an Egyptian. Because you, if you a Moor, what, what you got to do? Nothing. I help you out. You ain't got to do darn nothing. Run your darn mouth and act smart. And say you are a citizen beyond American citizenship and you are not, uh, the laws of America ain't applicable to you or whatever. Yeah, okay, go rob a bank right now. They write, they write to me all the time. They write to me at work. You know what I'm saying? I be reading these people. You know what I'm saying? They bring, yeah, they bring me their letters and be like, I am of the Moorish Temple. Um, the credit laws do not apply to me. I'm like, get that stuff up out of here and put that thing back on this darn credit. Anybody listening to black butt? What's wrong with him? I be wanna, yeah, they be writing this stuff to Gilmar. I be wanna write this, but your butt is not Moorish. You're darn Hebrew, now pay your darn pills. Stop being stupid. Why like somebody gonna take that to, oh, he's a Moor, let me take that right off. Oh, shut up. I don't know what's wrong with these people. They believe these lies. We told them. We tell them all the time. We made a YouTube video telling these people you're not Moors. 
every day. Y'all go to y'all go to my YouTube right now. Every day somebody comment on there arguing. Somebody, oh look at this. They call me Uncle Tom all the time online. They think I'm. They feel like I'm. I'm representing the government. Everything I be talking about. Somehow they get. I'm representing the government, and I'm trying to keep black people down by telling them that they're not Moors. Even though I showed them all the evidence in the world for it. I'm like, what's wrong with y'all? Don't y'all know the history? If you got a slave, right, you got real people that are Moors, right? You got Moors, and they black. And you got a white person that look at them. What, what white people say now? We all look alike, right? All right, so if you, got, if you got this black person, from the white people's perspective, look just like you, and he's a Moor. But these white people treat him with respect. You know what I'm saying? They ain't about to make him a slave. They ain't calling him the N-word. They're not doing none of that. They treating him with respect. Your black butt, they whipping you on the back. And when that white person walk up to that other one, they don't know the difference. They get to call him the N-word. He say, no, I ain't no N-word. I'm a Moor. You better watch your mouth. Because George Washington made a deal with the king of Morocco. And the king of Morocco said, I'll make trades with you under these conditions. You treat my people that's over there right. When my people come to visit, you treat them right. My people that was already there, you treat them right. So if you a black slave getting your butt whipped, and you see this more that, that from their perspective look just like you, and he get respect as soon as he say he a more, what you gonna, what, I mean your smart self, what you gonna start doing? No, I'm a more too! You better not hit me with that, girl. I'm a more, I've been a more the whole time! I just found that, but I've been a more. And so you say it, and you say it, and you repeat it, and you love your kids. You know your kid, you had a hard life, you've been whipped on your back, but that thing worked for you. And you love your kids. What you gonna teach your kids to say? You a more. You tell these people you're a more. Back in your day and uh, Mother's Day and all that stuff. Did, was it was it strict for us to, to, to dress a certain way? To dress a certain way, to represent ourselves a certain way? Why? Why did why did why did the parents do that to their kids? I love my kid. I don't want my kid to be turned around from a job. These people will kill my kid from drinking from the wrong fountain. You think I'm going to tell my kid, go drink from whatever fountain you want? No, you leave these white people alone. You represent yourself. Keep your head up. Look them in the eye when you talk to them. Don't be talking that hoopity jubity around them. I love my kids. You don't think we did that as slaves? We see these people and say, you know what? Nah, you are more. Through that, we gave up our own history. It was the wrong thing to do, don't get me wrong. But at least we can look and see why people did it. Now we get this far, and because our history has been taken away from us, and that some of it we gave away, right? Now we look back, and we look at it, and we say, we can't even trace ourselves back, so now we have people that are still deceived to this day. Because they open up a book, and they see something, they see something that their great-great-grandfather wrote, saying, I'm a Moor. And they say, you know what? I'm a Moor too. So they start this whole Moorish temple thing based off of all lies. Not realizing who sold the slaves to, to, to the Europeans. Moors. Who made the map for the Europeans to get here? Moors. Make a fool out of us every darn time. But nobody teaches the people these things. So we walk around, we bumping our head everywhere, and we scared to believe in anything. Like right? What country was conquered for them to take all of the... You gonna conquer all of Africa? I mean, you can't have it both ways. Black power, you know, I got my African church. It's black power, right? You know what I'm saying? Black power, you know what I'm saying? Pan-Africanism, all that, right? All that. But Africa is the greatest nation or the greatest continent in the world, right? All that, right? You, we black power, black power, Africa, Africa, Africa. So now, you can't have it both. If Africa is the most powerful, you mean tell me these white folks just walked in there and just took slaves? Just took everybody. Yeah, I mean, just walked in there and say, no, I want him. Give him to me. That's how that thing happened? Or did somebody make a transaction? So if somebody made a transaction, now you mean to tell me that these noble African people just traded on themselves? Nah. Somebody was a grunt in that group. Somebody was an unlike group. I mean, oh, I wish I had a map. Where my map? I wish I had a darn map. So I'll tell y'all how the slave trade happened. Up here, you got, you got uh, Portugal and you got Spain, right? Right down here, you got Northern Africa. All Northern Africa today is what type of people? Arabs. Arabs. Arabs today, right? So you had Northern Africa. I'm going to tell you how it became Arabs. You had Northern Africa and the Moors, which a lot of them were, were Muslim, black Muslim people. The Moors took over Spain. They was from Northern Africa. They took over Spain. They took over Portugal. After a while, the Portuguese and the Spanish, 
They wasn't having that stuff no more. So they said, you know what? We getting your butts up out of here. But guess what? Who else lives in Spain and Portugal? Jeez. Hebrews. Right? Who are also black. So from the black, I mean from the white man's point of view, what are you looking at? Get all y'all butts out of here. Just like they do us today. They don't care. They don't care where you from. It's nothing. Get all, all y'all butts is filthy. Get all y'all butts out of here. So all of them went out. But the Moors didn't like us. So you know where they picked us up from as slaves? In West Africa. That's so it's North Africa, West Africa, way down here. So they had to they had to push us down. Why weren't we in North Africa? I mean, literally, I wish I had the map right. Literally, it's like a hop skip. Like you can swim from Spain or the tip of Portugal, that that, that peninsula. You can swim from that to Africa. Literally, you can swim. All right, you can see the other edge, it's right there. Why, if we left Spain, got kicked out, all the Moors stayed right there in the north. They right there in the north. Why weren't the Hebrews there? Where did they go? They went all the way down in the west, uh, to West Africa, down southern. Because the Moors didn't like us, and they kicked us out. They pushed us down. And you know what they named it, if you look at the old maps? Negro land. And then inside of that Negro land, you got a new, another place on a map, I'll show it to you, called Kingdom of Judah. Right here, West Africa. Right? And that's where they picked us up from. They didn't pick no slaves up from North Africa. They picked slaves up from West Africa. Sayo Tome was over there too. Sayo Tome. Right? Picked them up right from West Africa. They make a fool out of us. Why didn't the Moors get taken? They was closer. I mean, if you're going to take some slaves, I don't like Moors, I don't like Hebrews. Let's just throw it out there, right? Moors is right next to our door to you. You can swim across and get their butt. Why didn't the Moors become slaves? Why, why, didn't you have, why didn't you have Moors being taken from, even, even the people who think they're Moors right now, they'll tell you, we weren't slaves. That's a myth. They'll tell you, slavery, that slave trade, that was a myth. They ain't going to date it. They admit, Moors wasn't no darn slave. Everybody know Moors wasn't no slave. So the only thing they can say is either you thought you was a slave, but you really wasn't. You were really a Moor, which is a lie. Or the Moor sold your butt out, which is the truth. Start believing these people. This is our history. That's why we got to go into it. Once the Most High God start laying this stuff out for you, you start looking at the stuff these people say and be like, nah, that don't even make half sense. That don't even make half sense. You just poke holes right in their stuff and they can't say nothing to you. All they're going to get is frustrated and start calling you what? Uh, Uncle Tom. <laughs> Keep going. And it shall come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto when you. When your what? When your children shall say unto he you. He said, when it come to pass, who going to say it to you? Your children. What mean ye by this service? What, what's the whole point of us doing this day? For what? That ye shall say. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. Mm -hmm. So did they. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. You see the point of this? The point of this for our kids. He said, you celebrate this day. And when your kids ask you, why are y'all doing that? Now you can tell them. Oh, this is from our history. Right? This is from when the Most High God passed over us. He took all of Egypt. He left us, though. So I owe you to God. When I'm talking to my, I told my son, I was like, I owe you to God. I gotta dedicate you to the Most High God. You here? I can't. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even mine. You here? Right? He could have took your butt, but he didn't. That was this day. This that's that's what it commemorates for us. We have to try to remember that. All of it is about keeping it in memory. Right? That's what it's all about. Right? Then we look at it and we see Yahweh Shua in every ounce of it. All right? You see, Yahweh Shua, he is our Passover lamb. He got slayed on Passover at even. Right? When he is hanging on the cross, what happened to the sky? It went dark. That's even. He made it dark at 12 o'clock just to make sure that he fulfilled scripture. The whole sky just got dark all of a sudden. We got clocks, right? We got clocks, electronic clock. So we'd have been like, nah, it's still noon. 
Back then they had no clock. You know that you know how they would have known what time of the day it was? Look at the sun. What position is the sun? Now if the whole sky just go completely black and you can't see the sun no more, what time is it for you? I think even now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't even got to, no, it's even now. I thought, I thought, yeah, some people would have sundial. You know what I'm saying? I thought, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I thought the sun was just right there in the middle of the, you know what I'm saying? But all of a sudden, it's even now. And then got that, I must have lost track of time. It's even now. That's book at that point. Right? Most of guy, he hung, he hung, he hung his sun right up there. Whole, whole sky just went dark. He said, yeah, that's even. And then right after that, guess what happened? What happened after that? Died. Because according to our, uh, this is Leviticus chapter 23. It's Leviticus chapter 23. Give me verse, mm, what, 4? Oh, on 5? Let me see. It's Leviticus chapter 23. I think I want like verse 5. I don't know for sure. Help me out if I ain't got it. Man, this stuff is rich, what we have in our history. You know what I'm saying? I sit here and listen to people just play over this stuff. Sometimes, I be, you know what I'm saying? I try not to listen like, at this stage, try, try not to listen like other pastors and all that stuff because one, I, I don't like the way it makes me feel. I sometimes I get frustrated and or sometimes I just get sad. You know what I'm saying? Just like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like there's no hope sometimes. Just like, man, every time I like, Try to put my neck out like, yeah, this pastor might be telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? Be feeling like, yeah, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? I hear him, it's just like, ugh. And I don't like talking to people about it because everybody just feel like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just beating up on pastors and I don't I think everybody else is wrong. So it's just like, oh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? When that, really, I would love, y'all don't even know, I would love for another pastor to be right. But I can't sit here and lie to you and be like, yeah, they right. Just, just for the sake to make people feel like, oh, yeah, he does like other pastors. I don't care. Right? I like the truth. That's what I like. I like the truth. I like for the people to be told the truth. Right? A lot of y'all sitting here. Y'all didn't y'all didn't came, you know what I'm saying? We go to your church. You know what I'm saying? We meet with your pastor and say, yeah, what's going on? Right? What's happening? You know what I'm saying? Uh, let, let's, let's discuss some things. We sit there and listen to the sermon. I didn't have people, they send me the sermon, you know what I'm saying? On, uh, oh, this is my pastor and uh, this is the online sermon. I sit there and listen to that thing. Whole time just taking notes like, oh, man, I don't even want to have this conversation with her. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, well, this is where your pastor. It's just feel all nitpicky. You know what I'm saying? Be like, well, he said that, and that's wrong. Because in her point of view, she don't know the book. She don't know how, how 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 important some of these things are. So for her, it's like, okay, he said Easter instead of Passover. What? No big deal. I'm like, no, nah, it's not a big deal. It's not kind of a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, he celebrates. He, he, he goes to church on Sunday. What's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Okay, you go on Sabbath. Eh, no big deal. It's no big deal when you don't know. So now I got to have that conversation and be like, eh, well, yeah. these are all the things that he was wrong about in that sermon. Uh, you, you don't want to go there. That mess around and lead you wrong. Right? Facebook, they, you, know, you know what they told me on Facebook one time? They said, I was throwing salt on the pastor. I was like, oh, yeah. Throw salt on sacrifices before you burn them too in a book. <laughs> Let that thing happen. <laughs> don't sacrifice nothing without salt. You know what I'm saying? Let that thing happen. I don't care. I'm not, honestly, I'm, at, at some point, you just got to get done with caring how people feel about you. When it comes to God, that thing can't play in. You know what I'm saying? You just got to be straightforward. Sometimes you're going to look like the bad guy. Sometimes you're going to look like the greatest guy in the world. You remain consistent. These people, through all their chaos, all of us, and even ourselves, through all our chaos, we going to look at that one thing that's been consistent. That's it. And that's what we have to be for each other. We have to be able to be consistent where I can look over and I can say, all right, T, I did mess up. And you know how I know I can get my way back? Because T, you right where you was when I messed up. Right? And that's happened before. That's life. Like, it's real life. Like, I sit back and I sit here and he take me back. It's my brother. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we have to do. We have to be that for one another and we have to be that for the world. We can't, we can't sit here just because people, you know what I'm saying, shoot our stuff down, just like, oh, no, God, y'all crazy, the white man wrote that. You think these people believe that stuff? They don't believe nothing. They don't believe, the, the stuff that people say, they don't believe any of it. People don't know what to believe at this point. So they're just saying stuff. They're saying what they heard. They say, they say what sounds cool. They're saying what sounds right. But they don't really believe anything. They just go with what a lot of other people are saying or what their group is saying or whatever. 
Don't let that stuff knock you off. You keep going with what the book say. If you wrong about something in the book, you correct it immediately. Don't have no pride. Don't sit there and be like, oh, but well, you know, well, you know, when God get that to me in my soul, cut that stuff out. Let me talk about what God got to give you in your soul. Can you read it on the book? Do it, say that. Then roll with it. Take your time, study it, make sure it's right, but roll with it. Don't waste no time correcting. Correction is important. You got to be able to admit when you're wrong. But at the same time, you got to be able to stand up on, 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 on a word when you're pointing out somebody else is wrong too. Not to make them wrong, but to show them that they're wrong. Or to show other people that they're wrong. Right? That's how it got to be. We got we to gotta get to a place where we can stand on it, unify, and then that's how people are. People, people at that point just follow groups. Right? God designed us that way. He, he designed us that way. He did a whole book called The Sheep. Right? And the sheep is just going to follow the next sheep. Right? He designed it that way. Ain't nothing shameful about that. You know what I'm saying? You see the people online and everything be like, yeah, the sheep, well, you guys just believe anything the news say. He designed us that way. Right? It's just those of us that he gave a gift to. You know what I'm saying? Those of us, and when I say gift, I'm talking about the revelation of him. Revelation of Yahweh Shua. When he bring us and say, okay, I'm saved. I'm, I'm Yahweh Shua. I'm going to walk after his word. I'm going to obey his word. When he give us that gift, those of us, we got to step out there and we got to be like, okay, let's clean some of this mess up. When the news tell you this, it ain't talking about your black butt. Yeah, news talking about the stock market going up and down and all that stuff. The country doing really good. Stock market is up. It ain't talking about your black butt. <laughs> it is not. Right? You know what I'm saying? But we don't have we don't have nobody to be like, okay, let me reinterpret that for black. Right? You know what I'm saying? All we got is the, the white media talking to white people, rich white people. We don't have nobody gonna be like, okay, when the stock market looks good for them, that's bad for your black butt who borrow money. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like when you you like living in debt. No, nah, that's not good for you. Those you know what I'm saying? Everything, everything you got going on is about to get real bad. They making money right now, and it's going up because you going down. Like, that's how that thing works. You know what I'm saying? We don't have nobody that teaches that stuff. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going to do it because guess what? That's our money I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't about to tell you that you're doing bad because by you doing bad, I'm doing good. That don't make no darn sense for me to sit here and be like, oh, well, y'all doing bad and we're doing great. No, because then that make people want to actually do good. You know what I'm saying? If I if I profit off of you doing bad, I'm going to encourage you to do good in a capitalist society? Nah, I don't make a whole lot of sense there. I'm going to make it off your back. It's like always done. Always done. Right? Ain't nothing change. I'm going to make it off your back. Right? That's what we have to do. We have to be able to step out. Not just everything, everything, everything is connected. Right? We talked about this before. We, we talk, we, people separate history and science and, and religion and culture and all those things. All of that is connected. All of that is one big thing. Right? All of that is one big thing. All of it connected. How are you going to have history without religion? If God tell me what Noah did, how is that not history? Right? So if it's history, how is it not religion? Because I believe it. God told me. Right? Don't that make it religion? Right? And if what Noah did drives my traditions, how is that not culture? So it's all of it is related. We can't let these people separate all that stuff for them. And they get to talking about the news and stock market and politics and all that stuff. We got to look at it and be like, yeah, that's us too. You know what I'm saying? Let's reinterpret this thing for what it means for me. When Donald Trump say, get these Mexicans up out of here, yeah, the urge might just be to be like, mm, and I don't mean Mexicans, just all Mexicans. I'm talking about Mexicans as in, you are a citizen of Mexico. I ain't talking about Mexican as in you're a descendant of someone from Mexico. I'm saying you're a citizen of Mexico here illegally. Right? <laughs> right? You're a citizen of Mexico here illegally. When he say, get the illegal Mexicans out of here, right? On certain, that thing might seem racist. And, and a lot of people might encourage us to be like, no, fight against this racist. Donald Trump is a racist. And Donald Trump probably is a racist now. Don't get me wrong. But that don't hurt us. If we reinterpret that for black people, that's a good thing. If you look at our stats, right, our unemployment, our uh, our poverty ratios and all that, when, uh, it got worse when, when illegal immigrants start coming in. Right? If you just look at the stats, it got worse when illegal immigrants coming in. Why is that? You want to know the time period that illegal immigrants start really rushing in here? About the time that we got... Uh, uh, emancipated. So you so you get rid of slave labor, and now you get cheap labor 
from people who really ain't even supposed to be here. Nobody's going to reinterpret that for us, though. For us, we're just looking at we're all in solidarity, the Mexican and the black person together. Then you know what, they, you know what else they're going to throw in there? The women. All right? They mean, like, yeah, and women, too. You know what I'm saying? They women take together because that's an easy one. But you know how somebody going to have to reinterpret that for it, right? Because you got these white folks, and when Massa was whipping the slave on the back, right? He, I mean, he had beaten their butt. He went in, and somebody made him dinner that night. When the slave was too hurt to make it, somebody made him dinner. Who was that? That was a woman. That was probably his woman, wasn't it? I mean, so when when the KKK put on his hood and everything, he go out. He ride on his his his, his, his uh, horse, and he get out there. He looking for him some some niggers, right? Somebody ironed his KKK robe. I don't know who that could have been. Oh, probably his woman. You know the you know the you know the Confederate statues you had, that they was talking about in the news. They was like, yeah, take these things down, all that stuff. You know a lot of them statues. It was a white woman who designed them things, right? So it's a win-win for white people when they when they can get when they can get the the woman like the woman's march and the woman's move. It's a win-win for them. They say the woman is paid less and this, that, and the other. She also got pension from her daddy, her rich daddy that passed down that much. She also got that. I mean, let's not leave that thing out. And if you want to talk about who paid less, let's compare how much the white woman is getting paid compared to the black man. Let's really talk turkey. Let's see who win now. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that, though. Let's see how much the white woman is put in jail compared to the black man. Or the black woman. Let's talk about those numbers. No, stand in solidarity. Black women. Every woman's march, guess who they're going to push up to the forefront of it? A black woman. They're going to put her butt right on the mic. Yeah! Ah! Ah! I'll be looking like, man, he did that. They're not your friend. They're not. You know what They're I'm saying? Really That's not your friend. argument. They're really not. It's cool to be. Look, I'm not. In no way am I saying like we shouldn't stand with other groups of people. That's not the point of what I'm saying. The point of what I'm saying is they should stand for us first. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if you just rank who, what, what population group is doing the worst in America, no matter how you slice that thing, it's gonna fall on us. So when you start to stack your priorities, who should come first? Uh, and yes, white women and women overall are done wrong in a lot of different ways in, our, in, in this society. I'm happy you know. In a lot of different ways, right? No problem. But when you start to rank that thing, let, I mean, let's just take that thing in order and let's just be fair about it. I think black people got to come first in some way or something. Let's have a black women's march. I'm fine with that. Let's have... Let's have, uh, 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 I don't know. Okay, I ain't got nothing for the illegal immigrants. Y'all just got to get y'all butts up out of here. I need my job back. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all butts just got to go build the wall, Trump. Build that thing all the way. Build it high. Come here legally. That thing ain't fair. Look, this is the thing that bothered me about it. They come here. They chose to come here illegally. And you know what they going to call it when they get here and not want to leave? The Dream Act after Martin Luther King. That's messed up. Did we choose to come here? boat that we hop on was like, no, let's just sneak on the boat so we can go to America and be slaves. That's crazy. Now, we didn't choose to come here. These people brought us here and never paid us what we was owed. And never gave us the stuff that they promised after they ended slavery. And then still enslaved us after they ended slavery. Then they came up with the 13th Amendment to have a loophole to say you ain't got no rights if you're a felon. And they continue slavery and still continue slavery in that fashion today. So, I mean, that thing just kind of bothered me a little bit. Like, you can't come over here and then attach yourself to black power and be like, yeah, we struggle just like black people. Nah, you ain't struggling. Not at all. Nah, You're you not struggling. You want to tell me, you, you want to know what the, what, what, the, what the illegal immigrants do? They come over here, right? They got a whole country to go home to. They come over here, right? They're poor in their country, right? Poor ain't got no money in their country. They come over here, they get in the house. Mama, you told me, you told me when, you, when you was in your neighborhood in L.A., when you first moved over there, what did you used to see in terms of the mess? Is she listening to me? Mom, what did you used to see in terms of the Mexicans when, when you moved into your neighborhood? You told me you moved into your neighborhood in L.A. All of them had them stair step babies and buying up, the, buying up everything in the neighborhood. And what they what they do for work? Sell oranges. And what else? What they used to take around the neighborhood and take pictures? Corn. Oh, that, the, uh, that, that horse, 
horse. They get themselves a horse. But they made money. They did. Put your butt. I got a picture on the horse. Look, put your butt, put your little black butt on the horse, dress you up. You know what I'm saying? I got a cowboy hat, a little bandana around my thing. I was a Mexican for that day. They came on. He took a picture of me. I look good in that darn picture, too. I still like that darn picture. That man can say 20 bucks. All under the darn table. I ain't paying no taxes on it. We who, we pay taxes, don't know it. Come on, come on. Now put your business out there. What the IRS do to you? Uh, they came at me like I owed them for 2014. And were they right about that or wrong? Wrong. I, when they gonna go out illegal immigrants? I paid the most in taxes that you can pay. So it's crazy. I'm trying to figure out when they gonna go after the illegal immigrants. No, they ain't even in the system. They don't even know they're there. But they got the same struggle we do, huh? That thing, that's, that's just the thing that kind of bothered me. You know what I'm saying? They pack up in these houses. They got they get their little side hustles. And then guess what they open up after they build up enough money? I mean, 17 of them in the house. And we laugh at that, right? That's a joke. Da, da, da. We laugh at that, but it's proof. You got 17 people in this house. You got all these people that's working, doing different things, stacking up money. They being patient. Nothing against them. They hustling. They doing what they got to do. Right? I'm just saying that they hustle, it's hurt nothing. And y'all here illegally. I can't hold a cell phone without getting darn shot. Y'all here illegally. Something got to gotta get it. Right? I stack money. I stack money. I'm messing. 17 people in the house. Stack money. Stack money. Sell oranges. Horse. You know what I'm saying? Corn. Get the corn. I still, I, look, I support the corn. Look. You got your you got your your cash kiosk, you know what I'm saying? You got your little little machine. I know I, I work with credit card. I know for a fact you gotta pay Visa, you gotta pay MasterCard, you gotta pay American Express if you want to take. Now, some places you don't see American Express and Discover on there. Cause it's like, man, listen, most people just got these two types of cards. I ain't about to pay these people. Cause you gotta pay for each, each one of those those uh those companies, those card associations. Right? So I get it, I understand. You got some overhead. You got a restaurant, you got a building, you know what I'm saying? You got some overhead. I can understand. That's why when I go to Taste My Love or I go to Best Meat Company on the west side, right? I get it. I don't mind paying $12, $14 for their plates. I get it. You got an overhead. Like, you you got a building. You got to you gotta, you gotta keep the lights on in the building. You got nice little TVs up, all this stuff. And you cable playing it. I understand. I understand. That ain't no problem for me. I, I support my black people. That's fine. No problem. Now, when I go to the mess and I try to give you a credit card, you'll be like, mm, 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 no credit card. I'll be like, okay, I can't just give you credit. You know, no credit card. Cash on me. All right, well, I'll just give you a credit Let me run to the ATM. I'll give you some cash. And then you want to charge me two fifty? What are you paying for? The corn? Six for a dollar. We got the corn there, you know? <laughs> That thing wasn't that expensive. So now they killing. And guess who buying the corn? Because what neighborhood are they going to be that in with the corn? When's the last time you drove through Summerlin and you saw the corn man hanging out, ringing a bell? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> You ain't never seen it, but they drive through some of them. They butt ain't about to be pushing the cart out there. They kick they butt up out there so quick. You better you know, get picked. Guess where they gonna be? Our neighborhood, selling it to our people, inflating the darn price. And guess what they do with the money after they make it? This is the work. They send it back to Mexico, bro. They charge me. I was at work. At school. And I don't want to beat up on these illegal uh, immigrants, but keep going. I was at work at school. Uh, it was like, you know, Long Elementary. It's like in a like, Mexican neighborhood. Uh -huh. And I was at work, and I seen a corn man across the street. I had like 20 minutes before the kids got out of school. Get you a piece of corn. So when I went against the corn, my man was like, yeah, 250 I was like, when they go up? But the family before me, I think he sold it to them for like a buck. They was Mexican. I wouldn't put it past them. They ain't got no sign talking about this how, this how much it is. Yeah. They ain't got no website. They ain't got no overhead. You gotta ask somebody like how much you pay. So when I went to ask them, that wasn't what the person told me they paid. And it was a Mexican person that told me. There you go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Wait a minute. It was like a Mexican family in front of me. I was like, I don't think that's that's now discount. I ain't mad. I'm giving a discount to your people. Yeah. I'm not mad. Honestly, I'm not mad at the business. Right? That's that's fine. What I'm mad is that you got the audacity to say you got my struggle, and that I should stand with you when what you doing is hurting my people. Right? No, I mean, I'm good. I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not against 
going setting up a corner. I told these people we was we were sitting down last week talking about hmm, where do these Mexicans get in the business at? <coughs> you know what we're talking about? Let's try to go into business. Every place they go into business. I'm a, I wanna I wanna I wanna emulate what they do. I respect how they do it. What I don't respect is that you got my struggle, because you don't. I mean, you just don't. You just don't have my struggle. You get your money, stack up, 17 people in the house, everybody working, everybody stack up, you send it back to Mexico, and then you open up a business in Mexico. That business in Mexico start getting money. Now you're no longer poor in Mexico. When you left, you were poor. Now you can go back to Mexico. When they when they deport your butt, you ain't tripping. You go back to Mexico. Now you ball. Then guess what you're going to do? You're going to take that legal money that you now have, bring your butt over here legally, and then you're going to open up Roberto's. You don't how, tell me how Roberto, they, they minorities, just like us, right? Why are there so many Robertos? How did they do that? I love Roberto. Don't get me wrong. I eat Robertos all the time. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, how were they able to accomplish that? How long have we been here? Next year to be 400 years. Right? They record us coming here 1619. Next year is 2019. Next year it'd be 400 years. You mean to tell me we ain't got no real chains of black restaurants or black businesses like that? How'd they accomplish it? And we can't. Because they got the support of a country. That's what I was going to say. They got their support. They can send money back to their country, invest their money where it's cheap out there, build it up, bring it back over here legally, and now they got the support of their business in another country. Where the money is meant something to be something totally different at that point. It's hustle. It's smart, right? It's good. You should be able to do that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not down there. I'm just saying that when that come against my people, somebody got to stand up for my people, right? Somebody got to be able to be like, mm, let me reinterpret what's going on for y'all. When people say, you know, Mexicans are good and they are taking up the jobs that nobody wants. What they're saying is they're taking up the jobs that the unimportant people want. Right? It don't matter if black people want that job. A whole bunch of black people that want a job. Right? What, what, jobs, what jobs do black Mexicans have? The illegal immigrants. They're working in yards. They're working in service, the service industry. They're working in... Uh, they're working... They're working, they're working, they working construction. Those type of places. Now... Rewind 50 years. Who was working those jobs? Black people don't want them jobs. So when they say, when they get to telling you, they're taking the jobs that nobody wants. No black person that's not talking about you, that's talking about white people. That's, they're taking the jobs that white people don't want. They're not taking the jobs that black people don't want. We'll take anything because when you're poor, that's what you do. Exactly. It's just logical. You're not going to sit here and say, no, I'm too good to work at our job. So in other words, what I'm going to do is just start. Nobody's doing that, right? You're going to take the job, just like we've always taken the job and worked as maids and butlers and worked as babysitters. You know what I'm saying? All these different things. All the, Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Still the same rate, rodeo. All right? Keep going. I don't know how we got to talk about mess. <laughs> this is Leviticus 23, verse 5. I don't know. <laughs> Well, now, now listen, if they if they not legal now, you all right? Now, if they legal, they legal, they did what they were supposed to. They, they, if, they, if they legal and they got over here, you know, the way they supposed to, you leave them alone. They're people just like you. That's right. You know what I'm they saying? They pay taxes, you leave them alone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Now, if they illegal now, or if they parents are legal, you know what I'm saying? You don't need to address them, but just keep that thing in the back of your mind. Nope. Whole oh, other story there, mom. Yeah, that's a whole other story. I deal with that one, too. Yeah. That's crazy. I deal with that one. But, you know, they also have legislation where they don't have, if they speak Spanish, they don't have to provide the same thing. They get grants for it. Yeah, they get grants. These Arabs, too. Only people walk, get grants. They can walk into uh, county services. And Why do you think the Arabs got own all these corner stores? They can do it without they only the kids. It's only us that don't get a grant. It's only the people that work here for free that don't get a grant to open up business all these different things. That make a whole lot of sense. I'm an Arab. I'm coming from overseas. Oh, yeah, and I got all this money. I can just open up a 7-Eleven right here. You know what I'm saying? I can franchise me out of 7-Eleven. How in the world are they able to do that? They got the support of a country. They got somebody that, they, they got a whole country that can, like, can lobby and fight for them. Like, hey, 
you know all these all these countries all these countries white people too all these countries you got more of their people here than in their country like Irish is more Irish in America than it is in Ireland right and the reason is because those are small countries been there for millions of years or not millions, millions. but been, <laughs> been there been there for been there for thousands of years right so they running out of room America's an eye opener for them so the population keeps going here you know what I'm saying and it's larger here than there. So they have more people here than it ends up being there, right? So Ireland, if they looking at America and they know all their people are there and they appreciate their people, Ireland will talk to America like, mm, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll do this, you do this, but look, up for my, look out for my people in this way, right? Like the king of Morocco, right? He writes to George Washington, we'll do this trade with you, that's fine. On the condition, you treat my people right. We don't have that. So no, I'm sorry. Even the Irish try to say, "Well, we were slaves first. No, 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 Stop no. That stuff. You were indentured servants. Yeah, that's a it big was a, difference. You had a you had a low income job, you know what and saying? then you got a pension. So that's a big difference. <laughs> big you know difference. Saying? You work for a few years, and then you own all that property. That's that's different. Cool. All right? That's different. That's different from being a slave, and you work for a very, very, very long time, and then you get done, and you get sent out. And then you gotta go work for somebody. So to the African Americans that say they're Moroccan or Egyptian, where's the support of your country? I was gonna say, just for their benefit of the doubt, they had to work for that property. They made them work so hard back then, so that they probably died long before they. No. No, nah, they didn't. No. That's what they taught y'all in school, huh? Yeah, they. That's nah, they taught y'all in school, huh? No, they taught y'all in school. A lot of Irish, Irish <laughs> own a lot of stuff on the East Coast. They taught it, they aight. They like all, you know all of Boston. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let's, let's, let's put the numbers up against who died the most. You know what I'm saying? Let's just got to run the nut. Crunch them again. Yeah, they tell them that at school. You know what I'm uh, saying? They try to make y'all feel better. But, that, but that's white people talk. For them, that, I mean, it's a big deal because three or four people die. I think, I think that's like, it's, it's, life is precious for anybody that's a big deal. Now you get the, you know what I'm saying, talking about millions of people. Don't even make it across the water. Stop. Right? Then they get over here and then half of them die off. I mean, kids get taken. Mamas get raped, right? In front of the husbands, right? Just so the husband can be like, mm, you're right, I'm not going to try to run away again. I don't want you to do that to my wife, right? Sometimes they keep them together just so they can use the wife against them, right? How do you think it developed where you have so many women against the men? Man, how do you think that like slowly developed, right? All this stuff take time. And I ain't trying to say white people mastermind nothing. This is all God's plan, Right? These white people ain't even smart enough to do it. I be looking at these people. I deal with these white people. And they ain't, you know what I'm saying? Black people ain't smart either. You know what I'm saying? But you look, just people in general, people ain't, you know what I'm saying? Ain't people out here just all this Illuminati type. People ain't planning out years and hundreds of years in advance. I don't believe that a bit. I deal with too many of these people. They not that darn smart. Like the individual is smart. Like a collective group of people, not so much, right? No, nah, I don't even think the individual is all that darn smart. They come up with great <laughs> ideas at times. You ain't smart enough to plan out past your death, though. Nobody sitting here and be like, okay, 20 years from now, you know, this is going to happen. And after that, this is going to happen. And that thing will go exactly as planned? Please, that's God's plan. But you know, and, then, and then the white person, the white man just going to stand right there in front of it, and he's going to be the front man for it. Who plan was it for, 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 uh, for Egypt to become the greatest empire? God. Was that Egypt? Was, was, was the Pharaoh so smart that he was like, you know what? Let's store... Let's store all of the all of the grain for seven years, because it's about to be a famine for seven years. Was that, that was that Pharaoh's great idea? God, that was God's plan. God gave it to Joseph God in a dream. God, oh yeah, cut that stuff. Out. God, God gave that thing out to God gave that thing to Joseph. Joseph said, "Okay, we'll take care of it." Right? That's why I say, don't just just take with everything you see online. These people ain't that darn smart. This stuff ain't coming together for these people like that. You got to be able to look, like I told you, you can look at the surface, but you got to be able to see behind all this stuff. Behind all this stuff, you look in the Bible, we got example after example of nations being built up and nations being taken down. In, in no situation was it ever the nation that built themselves up. Most like God said, he told them before it even happened, I'm going to build this na nation up, then I'm going to take their butt down. What did he say about Assyria? He said, Assyria going to be... My, the rod of my anger, eh, didn't he? The rod of my anger. And he said he gon' he gon he gon he gon he gon punish the Israelites. Not because then they say not because he want to. It ain't even it wasn't even in his mind. He didn't know what he doing. The king of Assyria ain't gonna know it. He ain't even gonna know what he doing. He just doing what he think he do. 
Well, like God said, he going to do it, and he going to be the man when he do it. And after he get done, what's going to happen to him? Damn, he just a tool. That's all I mean. He's a tool. All these nations just a tool. Don't let them be Illuminati. I don't believe. I don't believe in that stuff. They probably do got an Illuminati. I'm just saying they not as effective as they want you to believe. It's in chaos until the Most High God want that thing to go right. Then they stand back and they going to take the credit. Be like, oh, well, that was a great idea, John. <laughs> Please. I ain't listening to stuff. I know how these people work. We work the same way. We taking credit for all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? You see all the PR people be taking credit for stuff we ain't do. And cut that out. But these people, they the king of taking credit credit for something that they ain't do. Please, I ain't giving them no credit. All that stuff go to God, good or bad. All right? That's how I go. That's how they look at them. All right, look at that. We can condition our people to call our kids that stuff. I was at, I was at my grandmother. I mean, I was at my uh, my uncle out the other day, and uh, my cousin was call, calling the kids that stuff. Right? We've been conditioned to call each other and see ourselves that way. You know, we use that stuff in my house. It's so easy to see yourself any kind of way That's right. That's why we got to teach the people. These people don't want, these people don't want to stop violence. They don't want to talk about that. that. The only time they bring up Chicago and all them shootings is when what? When we bring up one of their cops shooting up, they don't really they don't want to stop violence. They don't want to stop nothing in our community. Because if they wanted to, yeah, if they wanted to, they'd just teach us who we were. Right? At the higher level, these people know who we are. Right? The CIA, the CIA can investigate Black Panthers, and they can investigate King, and they can investigate, uh, 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 what's the other group? The uh, Nation of, what is it called? Nation of Islam? Yeah. Right? They can investigate all these groups and they can say, we need to prevent the black what? The black what? Black community? No, nah, he said, he said, this is uh, J. Edgar Hoover. He said, we need to prevent the black messiah from arising. And what he was speaking about is some black man that was articulate enough to be able to get a message across, to galvanize the people, to everybody to unify and do what they need to do. They were smart enough to be able to look at all these groups and be like, mm, I know that's not what we want to happen. Right? But you don't, you don't take a genius to do that. You know what I'm saying? You look at him like, huh? well, I know that's not what I want to happen. Right? And so then you got to put people on drugs, all these different things. Y'all know the story. What was, right? uh, was that one guy, uh, Nixon's man? He was like, we knew we couldn't make it illegal, so we had to disrupt those communities. Oh, for the war on drugs? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, all that stuff, all that stuff is related. It was like, we couldn't make it illegal to be black, so. Yeah, yeah all that stuff is related. Right? These people, these people, look, these people are looking and they are doing what they're supposed to do. They're trying to preserve their authority, preserve their 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 spot. It's just like stocks. When we talk about the stock, they're just trying to preserve their, you know what I'm saying, the, the rate of their stock. Right? I got to keep this company going because I'm making money off of it. They're doing what they're supposed to do. It's just time for us to do what we're supposed to do. Teach people. If they, if they wanted us to do... Teaching black people about the stock market and watch them change. Yeah, you know how we do. We make it. We go into make a mess or something. You know what I'm saying? We always do something different. You know what I'm saying? We walk in there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wearing, wearing their hat backwards. You know what we gonna do? I mean, turn that thing backwards. And guess what happens? Oh, that's kind of cool, right? That thing wrong is all outdoor. It just bad hat backwards. That thing don't make no darn sense. But that thing end up being cool. We're going to the stock market, mess that thing up. We get to turn. No, actually, it's good when it's down. White people be looking at it. It is darn good when it's down. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how did you, you figure that out? Right? Because that's what we do. We look at stuff. We rebellious. We go in there. We try to do something different and make that thing, switch that thing all up. We make a mess out of these people's stuff. We always do. We always make a mess out of their stuff. You know what I'm saying? Jump in. You know what I'm saying? Do something. Make a mess out of it. Then after we make a mess of it, guess what, guess what they do? Take it. Be like, oh, that actually works, guys. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened to all our music. You know what I'm saying? We go with some music. You know what I'm saying? We got limited resources. We just trying to make something happen. You know what I'm saying? We just crying out, really. You know what I'm saying? We on, we on the field working, just crying out, trying to send messages to one another. You know what I'm saying? Then they look at that and they say, oh, now we can make some blues. From that comes country music, which we started. Gospel. Right? All these different things. So they look at it. We just twist some stuff up. Yeah. That thing look crazy at first. And then they go. You know what I'm saying? They roll with it. Rock and roll too. Rock and roll, all that stuff. Right? 
Hip hop, we just, you know what I'm saying? We just trying to. They took it. They took it. Hip hop was a combination of all that. Yeah, they took it. They took it out too. Go back to black roots, but they just decided, like, okay, you can have Good save, this part. Kendra. Okay, yeah. All right. Sport. Go ahead and pick this up. Let's see. Let's try to get up out of here. Leviticus 23, verse 5. This is Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Uh huh. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Mm -hmm. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Uh huh. In the, in the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Remember I told you all about the first fruit sheaf waving? Then you keep going. It's all book. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. Uh huh. And you shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Uh huh. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil. And an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, a fourth part of a hen. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that you have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Right? So that's what he set up for us for Passover. That was the law for us. Right? And that's what we celebrate year after year. Right? That's why year after year we come together. We spend this time, we try to get together, eat, have a little fun, joke, enjoy one another. That's, that's, that's what it's for for us. Right? The most I got, you will notice, he wants uh, he always wants us to be together. Right? He say every Sabbath, guess what he wants to happen? Everybody come a together. Holy convocation. That means a holy gathering, a holy assembly. Right? Right? So that's every week he wants people to come together. Not necessarily everybody, but then every Passover, he said, I want every male to show up. Right? And you know if the man gonna leave, chances are what's gonna happen. The women and children coming too. Alright, y'all can come on too. I can't leave it out now. I where we going? No, I was going. I was going to go. You know what I mean? We, 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 you know what I'm saying? I was just going to go. Why can we? All right, let's go. Right? Everybody just go. Right? That's how that thing work. So he said, I want every male to show up. I mean, I'm just going across the street, man. Three times a year, he said. I want everybody to show up. This is a whole country. He said, I want everybody to show up three times a year. Because it's important for God that we stay together, that we keep together. Right? Not necessarily every week. Sabbath, everybody didn't have to show up. He's just saying, this is a day I want you to come together. So some Sabbath, you know what I'm saying, just a couple of us here. The other Sabbath, cool, and that's good. That's cool, right? Ain't nothing wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, you do whatever you do. You have Sabbath at your own house, right? That's fine, it's right? It's dope, and the Bible seems like everybody knew each other. Like, this is such and such. The that's son how it's supposed to be for us. Such and such, the son of... Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's good, you know what I'm saying? You get, you get that, that one Sabbath where everybody just show up. But if everybody showed up every Sabbath, then it'd be kind of like, that's normal. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of cool. You had this Sabbath, like, just like tonight, where it's like, you know what I'm saying? A whole bunch of people just like, yeah, this nice. You know what I'm saying? But Passover, Feast of Weeks, you know what I'm saying? Passover, Feast of Weeks, the in gathering, those, he said, everybody's supposed to show up on those. But everything for him is about us coming together, staying together, being able to encourage one another, being able to set each other right, being able to correct one another, being able to teach one another, being able to listen, being able to work for one another, serve one another. All these different things are necessary. All of us got needs. All right? We just got to get to the point where we're together enough, we lean on each other for those needs. All right? That we trust each other enough to be like, you know what? This is what I need. Honestly, I mean, hey, I'm ashamed, whatever. This is what I need, though. Right? I got that issue too. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I be needing something, you know what I'm saying? I ain't calling nobody. You know what I'm saying? I gotta be out here trying to get the thing, figure it out. I got that issue too, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I got, I got, that, thing, got that thing bad, you know what I'm saying? Definitely but definitely like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But you know, we just gotta get to a point where we we all we all lean on one another and we all try to help each other out. It's just tough because we all know that all of us doing bad, right? Yeah. So it tells me like, well, I'm doing bad now, I gotta ask my brother who I know that's not doing too well either. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get it, but we, we still got to get to a point where we just, we just all in. We build that type of support. That's something that God can do something with. All right, God can God can work with that when you when you obey His word to the point where you're ready to lean on your 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 brother. All right.
Let's end off. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 real quick. Baby, go get the uh, go get the wine, the grape juice, and the uh, and the matzo. First Corinthians eleven. It's First Corinthians chapter eleven. Give me verse eighteen. Shh, baby. Can you go get the cup? Mm -hmm. It's First Corinthians chapter eleven. What's all that noise out there? Probably my kid. Zadok has a tendency of doing things he's not supposed to do. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> this is uh, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 18. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear he that... He said, when there, you come together in the congregation, watch what happens. I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. He said, y'all divided when y'all come together in the congregation. He said, I partly believe that thing. Keep going. For there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. He said, it has to be difference of thought, difference of opinion, different denominations within you because it's going to show the ones that's approved by God and the ones that's not. Right? That's why people split off. Right? Because they got to show. Most like God got to prove it out. Well, this group is the ones that's doing what I actually told them. These other people that call themselves Baptists and uh, this and that and all these different, I'm this type of Hebrew camp and I'm that type of Baptist. I'm this type of nothing. You know what I'm saying? He's like, some of these people got to be shown that thing ain't approved. Right? I'm this denomination in Christianity. That thing got to, mm, I'm this denomination in Muslim. I'm a Sunni or a Sunni, whatever they call themselves in Muslim. You know what I'm saying? Mm, God got to show this, some of this stuff ain't approved. Right? That's why, that's why what we call ourselves, we got to call ourselves based off what the book calls us, disciples. Keep that thing. We ain't trying to put no prestigious name on us. Nope, disciples. That's it. We ain't a disciple of the Most High God. People be unenthused when they hear it. You tell them that, they be unenthused. They be like, oh, that's it? They be expecting that. What else? You know what I'm saying? That thing didn't give them the punch they looking for. Like, well, I, don't know, I don't know what you looking for. Presbyterian, super Catholic. You know what I'm saying? They, they look like that cracking type. Ah, that's what I was looking for. Like, no. You know what I'm saying? We good. I'm a disciple of the Most High God. You know what I'm saying? What can I do for you? That's it. All right, keep going. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. He said, when you come together, it's not to eat the Master's Supper. What else? For in eating, everyone takes before others his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. Uh-huh. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Uh-huh. Or despise ye the congregation of God, and shame them that have not? Mm-hmm. What shall I say to you? Mm -hmm. Shall I praise you in this? Mm -hmm. I praise you not. Mm-hmm. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That he the said, Lord, I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. What? That the Lord Yahushua, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He said, the same night that he was betrayed. What night was that? Passover. That was the night before Passover. Right? He was going, he was having a Passover meal. He was having that the right night before Passover. All right? Keep going. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. He this took, do in remembrance of me. He took bread, right? And he broke it and he said, take this, eat it, right? It's my body. That's about to be broken for you. He said, now you do this and you do it in what? In remembrance of me. He said, you do it in remembrance. Why did we celebrate Passover? To remember when we were in Egypt. Is it a common theme that we remember from God or that we see from God? If we want to be saved, what do we have to keep in memory? The gospel. Is it just a common theme that we see from God? Don't let these people tell you that. You don't have to know the Bible. God, just believe. That stuff is crazy. The whole book is telling you to remember. Remember what day out of the week? Seven. And then what are we supposed to keep it? Keep it over. Why you tell us to remember so much? But it's not important. Remember Moses for that great notable day. You looked at his book the whole time. He trying to tell you, remember this and remember that and remember this. Oh, and don't forget that and remember this too. Right? 
Does that mean you have to be able to quote the word exactly how it's written? No, not necessarily. Do I remember you have to remember exactly what Bible verse that is? No, not necessarily. But you do need to remember the message. You do need to remember what you're responsible for. You do need to remember what the man did for us. That's our souls, right? That's, that's what it is for us. Watch what he said. He said, take the bread, break. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. He said, this cup, this is the new covenant in my blood. Right? Whenever we, whenever we make a covenant, blood has to be spilled. He said, this is the blood of that covenant. He said, take it and do this in remembrance. Keep in mind. This, I came here. I was here. I fulfilled the book. Right? That's what he's trying to tell us. Don't forget this. Right? Keep going. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. He said, as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you show what? You show the Lord's death until he come. You show the firstborn son being taken. So every Passover, in Christian churches, they do it like every third Sunday or something weird like that. But it was meaning it's meant for like every Passover. This was done on the, the Passover. He did it the night before Passover. So the Passover represented his death. So that means every year when you keep the Passover, like the Mo law of Moses said, also remember the Messiah. So that's how often you would do it every year. The significance of these days is taken from us because people haven't taught us our history and because people decided to, to create their own holidays, weirdo stuff. And have a, we learned about a, a, a bunny last week, right? What did what the law say about a rabbit? They're unclean. They said that they're unclean. They got the nerve to give us a day and put a rabbit on that thing, which is unclean before the Most High God. And then on top of that, they made the rabbit lay a darn egg. They make fools out of us every single time. And by doing that, robbing us of our history, robbing us of the significance. And not just us, the whole world. These white folk, Japanese folk, all these different groups of people, all of them can benefit from this. If people knew the significance of all this, don't you think it would change the way they operate? At least they can make a decision be like, oh, that's too deep for me. I don't want to be a Christian no more. Right? If they just told the truth. You think I care if you call yourself a Christian and you did exactly what the book say? I don't care nothing about you calling yourself no darn Christian. The only reason I care about you calling yourself a Christian because now you have, a, you, you, have, you have the optics of somebody who does not do what the most high God said. So now Christian means something. It has too much. That thing got too much re reputation. Don't call yourself a darn Christian. You putting a reputation on yourself. If the reputation of Christianity, if they did everything in the book and say, you think I'm a care? I mean, uh, you do what the God, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, ain't gonna, I ain't about to spend my time. Don't call yourself a care. Call yourself what you want to call yourself. As long as you obey in the word. Right? It's important for us to look at this stuff. and be, We just have to be able to, to represent what's true and what's right. And by doing that, the Most High God will come back for us. It'll get rough. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's probably uh, going to get rough. Within the next few years, it's probably going to get rough. Right? But nevertheless, we have to stay consistent. We have to be able to look and be like, at the end of the day, I know where I need to be. Right? As rough as it's going to get, no, no matter how long I'm in the wilderness, y'all, no matter how much we eat the same food every day, I know at the end of the day, I know where I need to be. If we keep that attitude, if we keep that hope, we'll be all right. And part of keeping that hope is remembering. So what we're about to do right now, did she bring the crackers yet? That's terrible. My wife. That's pretty messed up, bro. You look like a Christian now. We're going to work it out. Yeah, they roll it out. They roll that thing out. They roll that thing out. We got a nice little thing. Got a nice card. Silver tray. You know what I'm saying? Silver tray. Listen. They got, the, they got the white sheet. I did, yeah, listen. They, they got the white sheet. You pull that thing off. You only got two washers to do it, too. Like that thing's super delicate, like it, like it's medical equipment or something. They, no, no, that Don't let it touch the And then you, you drink the juice and put it in the bowl with the water in it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, they always have them fancy plates, you know what I'm saying, where you put the cup and it, it's like a, a bunch of cups on that thing. You just take it out, drink it. You know what I'm saying? That thing was nice, you know what I'm saying? And look at that. All we got is a darn Dixie look, cup. Tell her to cut that out. 
Oh, yeah, we got the dark. What are you doing? <laughs> Come on, let's go. We about to we about to get off the camera and uh and uh and take uh take the master's supper here. But I want y'all to know what it what it represents for us. It's it's about remembering, right? It's about it's about us. Click that uh click right there where it says stop streaming. And then go to or actually go to Facebook first. Go to the Chrome. Click stop streaming on there for me. No, some of the music is still good. Yeah, some of some of some of them be glorifying sin. Yeah, you, you definitely got to know which one. Some of some of them good though. I definitely like the spiritual. I like that old stuff, huh? Yeah, in live video. Don't do nothing else. Just leave it right there. And then go to uh, go to that black one, and then click stop uh, streaming for you. <laughs> I know what to do.